today's episode of Suppressor Science, we're gonna find out, do these ports, these cutouts above the bore on all your baffles, how much does it matter to actually have them aligned throughout the stack? Does it affect accuracy and sound? Find out today. Most silencers, at least baffle stack type silencers, have some variation of this. So when you fire around, your gas enters the silencer, so your gas is gonna dissipate inside that first chamber. It's gonna be obstructed, obviously, by the small hole, and it's going to move to the next chamber as efficiently as it can. Gas is gonna enter through the bore, the same way it entered into that first expansion chamber, and you have a pretty consistent spread of how the gas and pressure wave is gonna dissipate in, into the next chamber. Then if we add a port in here, now we're adding the ability for gas to enter from this way as well. So now you don't just have gas trying to come through this way, you have gas also trying to come through the top. Now we're pushing the gas down instead of this gas coming straight through the center. We're kind of pushing it downward off center from the next borehole. Say we have a second baffle here. Now with this gas being pushed downward, more gas is going to go towards the bottom of this baffle relatively than through the center. So now you're gonna have gas coming down here, path of least resistance. You're gonna have it kind of having to circle back around to get to that larger entry. As we stack baffles that way, we're creating the most amount of delay, uh, the longest path for that gas to go. And then also that turbulence encourages mixing of combustible materials, ensuring that your materials burn up faster. Now, if we shift the port to the bottom, we're creating a cross jet or a vector pushing down, encouraging the gas to go down below, meaning that it's going to allow more gas up through there because we have the larger opening on the bottom where it's being pushed to. Whereas if it's on the top side where they're all aligned, that creates the longest path for that offset vector to get in and go to the next baffle opening. So there you go. That's essentially the theory behind porting coned baffles, why it works the way it does, and why generally speaking, you'd want all your ports to be aligned. But let's, let's see if that theory holds up. We're gonna do some testing with a few different silencers on a few different hosts and see in, in real time, in the real world, do uh, sound and accuracy get affected in any way, positive or negative, by doing this or not. Let's find out. First up, we've got our Warlock 22 Rimfire Silencer. So we're gonna crack this open and we're gonna make sure all the baffles are oriented, aligned. We're already aligned, just verifying. So we will shoot that, see how it sounds. Okay, so we had all our ports aligned for that data set. Now we're just gonna kinda mix them up. I'm gonna pop all these apart Make it a little bit random. I'm not gonna pay attention to where the ports are. Just slap it back together. Cool, so average there, 115.6, and we had a first round of 120.4, which was a higher first round pop than our first one. But nonetheless, those are the two lowest averages and the two lowest first round pops out of all those configurations. All right, so we shot our Warlock on a Ruger Mark IV handgun. Now we're gonna shoot it on a rifle. First and foremost, there's not a ton of difference here. If we look at our Ruger Mark IV on our short barrel, our first round pop was definitely reduced by having the ports aligned. Our random ports were the worst at first round pop and our 180 degree alternating kind of fell in the middle. We're 121.7, 122. In all reality, uh, between going random as if we didn't care to actually aligning all of our ports, we are, yeah, we're about five to six decibels. That's, that's meaningful, that's, that's real. All in all, yeah, our all aligned configuration generally puts out the best numbers. Uh, but the main thing I see, first round pop, very meaningful. Muzzle average, having them all aligned, both of those were quieter than both of the other averages. So considering sample size, again, it's small, but this is in line with what we've seen plenty in the past, is you do get a little bit of an edge. On a pistol, I would say, yeah, port alignment matters. It's not gonna make your silencer ineffective if they're not, but if you wanna squeeze out every last bit of performance you can, you're gonna get a bit of an edge on the average, and then your first round pop, that's probably something you're gonna notice as a bystander, at least 
on our silencer. All right, it's getting late in the day, so we're gonna call it a day. And we will come back tomorrow and pick this back up. So don't be alarmed if we're wearing different clothes and showered. Oh, hey, so we left off finishing our 22LR sound. Now we're gonna move on to accuracy. So we've got our Mark IV in a ransom rest to keep it nice and rigid. Beaver's gonna shoot a couple groups to see what the innate accuracy of that pistol is at 25 yards. And then we're gonna throw on our suppressor and experiment with our port alignment on that and see how that affects our group sizes, if it does. Although a small data set, this really just reinforces what we've observed for years here. We've developed a lot of silencers, we've done a lot of testing over the years, and essentially what we have consistently seen is that aligning all your ports often will ensure that you get the most consistency and the most repeatability and the best performance all around. It has never hurt anything, and sometimes if they are random or alternating or some other manner of things, corkscrewing for example, we lose performance. So what I would say from this data is it shows what we've already observed a lot in the past. Best performance, just align your ports. There's no reason not to. So there's all the rimfire stuff. Let's move on to center fire pistol. All right, we took a break. So we did all of our rimfire stuff and uh, it's been a couple weeks. Uh, we actually got our microphones upgraded. So now they're not on the ground on tripods that can get tripped over. So we're now hanging them from the ceiling. So that's pretty neat. And we're gonna pick it back up starting with the center fire pistol silencer. So we're gonna start with our octane. We're gonna do the same thing we did with rimfire. Uh, we're gonna start doing some shooting and uh, we'll start with all the baffle ports aligned, get some sound, do some accuracy and go from there. So really what I deduce from this is it really doesn't matter uh, all that much. As far as first round pop goes, having all your ports aligned does help with first round pop. It's a pretty minuscule difference in this circumstance, but that is in line with what we've come to know in the past. Is generally speaking, with your ports aligned, you're going to reduce first round pop versus if they were scattered in really any other way. Ear averages. I mean, we're kind of in the same realm. Uh, we're essentially in the, in the noise of the data. And also remember that on a handgun in particular, something that's directly recoil operated with a tilting barrel, you have a lot of mechanical action, just that clack of that metal going. So there's not a whole lot you can do to reduce that without really reducing your slide velocity. So no matter what suppressor you put on it, you're not really changing the action noise, the clacking of the metal that much. As far as accuracy goes, we're really within the noise of the data again. Uh, I would say that it doesn't really affect the accuracy from what we've seen. These are pretty tiny groups. I mean, this is at 25 yards in a fixed rest. To give you an idea, I feel like it's a little different when you're seeing the numbers on the board. It's easy to say like, oh, that one's smaller than that one. It's better. So, I mean, you look at this, this is 1.4 inch group with the ports random, 2.29 with everything aligned. I mean, at 25 yards, how meaningful is that? Is that even real? I would say no, because we've shot a lot in the past and you're not gonna see any real difference. Maybe if you had massive sample sizes, but even then, based on what we've seen and experienced here, you're really not gonna see anything meaningful. So that's center fire pistol. Let's see if it matters on rifle. We are here at TNT Guns and Range. It's a pretty awesome gun store and range in the Salt Lake Valley. So we're gonna take advantage of their 100 yard indoor range today to have a nice controlled 100 yard range. And uh, we're gonna shoot some precision rifles. For exploring this whole does port alignment matter concept, we've got some Omegas, which have the ports aligned. That's how we sell them, that's how we make them. And then we've got some Omegas that we intentionally scrambled the port alignment. And we're gonna shoot both of those and see does our accuracy open up or change at all depending on how the ports are aligned. We're gonna head downstairs with some 6.5 more hosts and ammunition and go do some shooting, see what kind of groups we get.
We're downstairs at TNT in their 100 yard range. It's a, basically a big old pipe in a nice controlled environment without wind. It's 100 yards. Me and Beaver here are gonna kind of have a little competition and see who can shoot the best groups. So we're gonna do some unsuppressed and then we've got our Omega that has the ports all aligned. Uh, we're both gonna shoot some groups for, through this guy. And then we've got our Omega with the ports scrambled, uh, which is not how you'll find them in production. We're both gonna shoot some groups with that. And then we'll head back to headquarters, compare our groups, so use a better shot, and also see if port alignment mattered. These are both 6.5 Creedmoor hosts. It's my bolt gun with a 26 inch barrel, and Beaver's got the Sock OM-10 running a 6.5 Creedmoor barrel as well. Let's shoot. Let's go. Beaver and I both just shot some unsuppressed groups and not super stoked about them, but they were okay. What? Confidence. Oh, I mean, they were outstanding. Just wait till you see them later. We finished shooting, we got a bunch of groups shooting unsuppressed and suppressed with a normal Omega and one with a port alignment all scrambled up. So it's about lunchtime, we're gonna go eat and then we're gonna head back to headquarters and talk about everything we experienced. All right, so here's all our groups we shot today. Uh, these first two targets are our unsuppressed baseline. My shot groups are on the left, Beaver's shot groups are on the right and then we measured our group size, took the average of that per sheet. So on this core, that was Beaver's overall average, that was my overall average, and use that as our comparison. So I'm gonna take my average overall per configuration and Beaver's average overall per configuration, and that's what we're gonna stick on the whiteboard to compare data. Okay, you guys good? Send it. Pretty good, 132 ish muzzle and ear well there you go bud there's about a five decibel difference on that one between aligned and scrambled okay so we just shot our first string um on the 6.5 Creedmoor with uh, the Saco M10. And our straight port Omega did really well. We were about 32 dB at the muzzle and ear using the CSAS standard for the ear. And then when we went to our scrambled port orientation, we went up quite a bit. It was, it was about a five decibel increase, both at the muzzle and the ear. So just to ensure that's not an anomaly, we actually have two additional cores we had welded here. One has the ports all aligned, and then the other one has them all scrambled again. So we're going to recore these Omegas. Yeah with basically another sample. So we're getting essentially another randomized re-scramble and then another straight core. Fun fact, this is why warranty is so fast on the Omegas. We can peel the tube off, rip out the core and recore it. Pretty damn quick. Welcome back to this whiteboard. So, this is all the data we gathered today with the 6.5 Creedmoors. Shot all of our sound with uh, Beaver Saco M10, which has a 26 inch barrel. And then with accuracy, again, Saco M10, uh, that's actually gonna be the bottom samples here. And then I shot my Tika T3 build, my custom rifle build for my groups, which are on the top here. So we look at our first round pops. We have about, man, we're looking at like a six to eight, maybe nine decibel difference. Both of our cores, this is core one and core two, when we had all the ports aligned, we're about 132 dB. And then when we went to the random scrambled port alignment between two different samples, our first shots went up by quite a bit. I mean, we're at least four and up to about seven, just under seven dB. That's significant. That's, that is not negligible. That is something that you will actually pick up just by listening. Yeah, based on this data, having the ports aligned versus scattered actually makes a huge difference. It's interesting that we don't see that much of a difference on the rim fire and the center fire pistol uh, data we sampled. Pretty meaningful. Then when we come to look at our accuracy, um, I averaged 0.94 inch groups at 100 yards with my Tika and Beaver shot 1.16 MOA with his Saco, so <laughs> beat him there. But to his credit, he did have coffee for with his breakfast, so maybe he's a little, a little shakier than I was. Um, and those were also our first groups of the day. We didn't omit anything. We're being, 
wearing our hearts on our sleeve and being honest. <laughs> we didn't reshoot anything. There's virtually nothing there. That's, that's completely negligible. So it does not appear at all that having the ports aligned or not is doing anything to our accuracy. This leads me to believe that port alignment does not affect our accuracy at all. Um, it's, it's essentially flat, no matter how the ports are aligned. So overall, on the 6.5 Creedmoor, with, this bolt, with our bolt guns, both of our bolt action rifles, I would say sound is absolutely affected by having your ports aligned. Accuracy, not really, nothing or negligible. This was all on a bolt gun though. So a high powered rifle on a semi-auto like an M4, should we see if sound follows these same trends on there for some extra credit? I'm all about extra credit, so I think we should do it. Ooh, that sounded louder. All right, here we are. Extra credit completed. The trend we saw on the 6.5 Creedmoor bolt guns held true here too. It's interesting to contrast that to the bolt gun where your at ear numbers are essentially the noise that propagated back from the muzzle because there is no action noise. So the fact that we have noise propagating to the back from these muzzle numbers and the ear number is higher, tells you that that is in fact action noise. Holds true there too. Port alignment matters for sound on a semi-auto, like an AR, just as much as it does on a bolt gun. All right, that about wraps it up for this video. Hopefully you found it informative, maybe even entertaining. And uh, yeah, so I guess overall I would say port alignment I think it matters to get a performance edge, but overall it doesn't mean that your silencer doesn't work if it's misaligned. And of course, this isn't gonna apply to everything. It's not, we can't test every single silencer from, that's ever existed with every single firearm that's ever existed with every type of ammo. You get the idea. So take everything with a grain of salt, but I would say this reaffirms kind of what we've come to know here about port alignment. And with that, I hope you have a great day and thanks for hanging out with us. We'll see you next time.